Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. Lots of football to talk to you tonight about, and you can give us your thoughts on our Facebook Live as well. And if you uh, want to catch up on the programme, you can do across PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Slightly different format, as you can see, needs must in uh, very difficult times across the world, not only for football, but for so many other sports, and of course, uh, for so many other people in jobs right across the world but here in the UK here on PLZ Soccer as you can see we've got three people here to talk football today and hopefully uh, give you some entertainment along the way uh, Alison McConnell, Barry Ferguson and Alan Ruff are here with me. Uh, we'll be talking about some of the main points today Stevie Naismith uh, agrees to take a 50% wage cut and says he'll be there for Hearts next season whatever division they're playing in. Uh, we'll talk about that £6 million investment that Aberdeen are looking for with obviously the gap in the money coming in to the club. Roger Mitchell reckons Hearts and Celtic uh, and of course Rangers have already accepted the fate of what's going to happen uh, before we get to the summer with regards to the end of the season. Just a few of the topics plus of course if you want to join in we are going to look at the nominees for Player of the Year. Young Player of the Year, Manager of the Year, if the season doesn't get restarted. So quite a lot to get our teeth into. And of course, one other moment for today to reflect on is, of course, it's the 25th anniversary of the death of the late, great Davy Cooper. So we'll uh, look back on a wonderful man, a wonderful player, uh, and of course, some of the highlights as well. Well, uh, Ruffy. We've sampled everything in our eight or nine years together. This is a new twist. Yeah, it's just as well I'm up to technology. Uh, just now, you know, I'm really up to all the stuff that's going on. <laughs> I'm, I've helped you all out. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's, it's a new yeah. thing. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. So we'll just have to get our head around it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Rafi, I don't know if you can uh, see there, but uh, Barry, I think, Barry, am I right in thinking that your studio is set up in your wonderful kitchen where you delivered some red wine for us not too long ago? Yep, it's that very place that we sampled a, a couple of bottles of nice organic red wine. So that's where I'm at. It's the only place I get a, a decent reception. So there's my missus, she's yep. cooking mince and totties behind us. So. <laughs> Well, she's not behind us now. She's been sent outside. But that's my dinner yeah. later on. Yeah, I've just got to clarify, by the way, when he means it's the only place he gets a decent reception, he's talking, of course, about the Wi-Fi and, of course, the broadband, <laughs> rather than uh, most of the family don't talk to him. Uh, uh, over and above <laughs> that, I have to say, Alison, uh, you've got the books behind you. Typical journalist from the written press, always wanting to impress people uh, with the cat sat in the hat behind you there. <laughs> Give me a, an, an insert into my um, crime reading uh, that I like, so I don't know what that says about me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, uh, we're going to crack on. We're going to react to uh, more than a few people who want to talk to us on Facebook Live as well. Thanks very much for joining us. Of course, uh, coronavirus is still at this moment dominating everyone's thoughts, especially in the football sense, uh, because people are worried of what the future holds. Um, first and foremost, Ruffy, Stephen A. Smith's come out and said he's willing to take the 50% cut. He's also uh, reiterated that he's going to be with Hearts whatever division they're in uh, next season. And I think... Hearts fans mm -hmm. will welcome that from Stephen. Yeah, I think uh, obviously he, he likes where he is. He's got a very, very good contract. He's coming to the end of his career. And, and why not? Uh, it's a place you would want to finish your career at. It's a beautiful stadium. It's a really, really good club. And uh, I, I think a lot of players will follow suit on that one. Yeah, Stephen Aismith, you know him, Barry. You know what type of person he is. Uh, of course, some people might be slightly critical of him, saying, well, he can do that because he's at the tail end of his career and he's made his money, but it's still something that a lot of players have to accept. Clever de Camona has decided to cut short his contract. He just wants to go home to France to be with his family, but he's more than willing to come back. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised when Aisy listen. I know Aisy um, pretty well. Uh, Look, there's no doubt Nezi's made a good career in football financially as well. So 
Look, at the end of the day, he has a contract. It is a very good contract, but look, I'm not surprised that he's decided to, to take the 50% cut. I think he enjoys it there. As I said, he's in the twilight of his, his career, and basically he just wants to go out and play football. Just for the benefit of anyone who's wondering, by the way, I don't know if you can hear Ruffy breathing, Alison. It really, it really is great that he's breathing through that microphone when he's not speaking as well. You see where the te- <laughs> you see where the teething problems come in this one, um, Alison. Hearts fans will be looking and saying to themselves, "Listen, he's taking a fifty percent cut. Good on him." But there's a lot more pain ahead for Hearts because uh, the handover from Man Budge to the foundation of Hearts is not going to happen at the moment. They're going to try and steer themselves through what could be a difficult period, um, obviously with that cloud of relegation hanging over them. It's a very difficult period for, for them. I think there, it was inevitable that the handover wouldn't happen. The minute that this this uh, kicked off and the, football, the announcement that football was suspended, I think that was inevitable. I think right now that's probably the least of their concerns. Uh, I think you'd have to applaud Stephen Naismith for, for his gesture and agreeing to the 50% pay cut, you wonder if it just paves the way now for, for others to follow. Uh, I agree, I think uh, it's in, in the final years of his career, it's maybe an easier decision for him to make than others. Uh, but I think his decision to come out publicly and state his intention is important for the club and, and, and just maybe might offer some food for thought for those round about him. But it's, it, Carts are not the only club who are going to find themselves struggling and concerned about financial worries. I think uh, if you saw the the statement from, from Dave Cormack today at Aberdeen too. It's quite an eye-opener when you see clubs who have been well-run, debt-free, and just what the impact of no football money, no gate receipts, no season ticket money coming in, about what it can do and how quickly it can do it. Yeah, I have to say, by the way, uh, it's amazing how the Facebook Live can can work, guys. Rab uh, and Paul are already worried that Ruffy needs an inhaler. I think people are actually going to send them in, Ruffy, um, because of your heavy breathing. I mean, so, that's what happens when I'm, you get... <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, I'm sorry. I usually take the blame for a few things, but I'm sorry. It's not coming from my end, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, hi to Michael uh, Jones. Cracking setup. Uh, definitely Peter with the heavy breathing, says Michael. He's blaming me, Ruffy, so that I'm going to try and read out as many of them as I possibly can. Listen, Ruffy, uh, Alison has highlighted the fact that, quite simply, Aberdeen looking for £6 million investment. Hearts have already highlighted their problems. This is just the tip of the iceberg for me because lots of clubs will look and say, how are we going to get money? There's no revenue coming in. How are we going to get money? Who's going to fill that gap? I mean, even Rangers. I mean, Barry was mentioning on the, only in the last two or three weeks, you know, the story about, uh, you know, Douglas Park was signing checks, uh, you know, at, at, at Rangers. People will need to actually invest to get clubs over that difficult period. Yeah, I, I think uh, as usually happens, uh, a lot of it will fall on to the supporters. Uh, a lot of supporters... Uh, like to help their clubs, uh, even at Partick Thistle when we were in trouble, the supporters got right behind the club and put a lot of money into the club. They've done it at Hearts as well. Uh, the supporters are a big, big factor. That's why you have to keep them on board. You have to be very close to everything that's happened at your club. And it, we saw it in the papers. We saw it. lots of clubs, you know, even Dumbarton and teams like that. The supporters are quite happy to put money in to help their club because it's a, it's an institution. You know, and, and these, these these supporters need somewhere to go on a Saturday. So they see that uh, if they can help the club out in any way, that's what they're going to do. What about the comment coming from uh, the former SPFL Chief Executive Roger Mitchell? Uh, obviously, he's looking at the situation. Barry, he sees where the league is at at the moment. Um, a lot of people are waiting to see if the SPFL will eventually come out under, obviously, direction from UEFA that the league is finished. There's no chance of a ball being kicked and they have to declare champions. I mean, I know up in the North, Pro Rangers are celebrating a title win, but as far as uh, the SPFL's former Chief Executive Executive Roger Mitchell, he reckons that Rangers are resigned, that Celtic will be champions, and uh, Hearts, I think, he reckons are resigned to the fact that they'll be relegated. Big call from him. It was a big call. Look, Peter, I think if MD's got anything about them, we realise there's going to be no football. Uh, we've spoke about it. I think now the SPFL need to come out and make a decision sooner rather than later what's going to be happening. Now, I've said plenty of times before, quite a few people 
will be happy with the decisions. Quite a few people won't be happy, but listen, it's one of these ones we'll just need to accept and move on. That's that's the way I look at it. Yeah, there's a lot of people coming in with their comments on it. I, I must just read out a few. John Simpson says, brilliant guys. Long may this continue. Every little bit of entertainment is greatly appreciated during these times. Uh, you know, the good thing, I, I, I've got to be honest with you, Ali, uh, thank uh, the Lord I fitted Ruffy uh, a, a screen behind me you know how you get these little cinema screens that you can watch uh, uh, thankfully it comes down Barry so that there's white behind you because the last thing the last thing everybody needs to see is 500 Henrik Larson shots from every club that has played that uh, you're, you've been respectful putting that down I quite like that it's better that I'm so it looks better oh. I'm so glad the battery's still working, Barry. I thought I was in for a, a, a rough ride there, you know. Um, I'm Ali's just worried. Got a book behind her. I'm just worried what's behind Ruffy next. Um, what's he going to come up with next? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Ruffy, are you in your kitchen or are you in the Alan Ruff 1978 World Cup room? No, I'm actually in the the dining room. Uh, it's one of oh. the dining rooms, but uh, I'm in. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm in the. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Ruffy, could I'm you explain how you managed room. to move away from I'm the common man? I'm in the only <laughs> dining room. I'm only in one dining room, as you know, Peter. Uh, He's no, in the no, west I was going to. I was going to do it in the living room, but I've been told uh, that uh, I have to do it in here. I'm quite happy in here, actually. I can look out the window yeah, and absolutely. see the, fe the the pheasants and the chickens and everything around the garden. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Listen, you'll never know how accurate that is. He lives in the middle of nowhere. Um, anyway, thanks to everyone who's uh, coming in. Um, uh, George Mullen says, before the call-offs, would you have bet on Rangers catching Celtic? It's just one of those great pub arguments, Ali, isn't it? Everybody's looking and saying, well... Some people have come out and you know in the in the media and said, "Listen, you can't call it; it's too close." Uh, and then some people have said, "Listen, Rangers' forum after December was poor; call it." I think what's happening with the SPFL is legally they're waiting for UEFA to, to to give everybody direction once it becomes just impossible to play the games, and then I think that's when it will be called. Could be April, could be at the start of May. <coughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, but what I think we've really noticed these last few weeks is a serious lack of leadership. I agree they're maybe waiting on a, a legal nod to do it, but what you've seen today with uh, with Aberdeen, what we've seen last week with Hearts, is that clubs desperately need uh, some direction and they also need to know about money coming in. I think if you declare it now, then at least you can give out prize money. Uh, and I, as we spoke about last week, you're never keeping everybody happy. I think if you call it now, it does seem unfair. I think there's no getting away from the fact that it, it seems unfair that clubs aren't getting the opportunity to play themselves out of relegation. Uh, it could be it could be critical for a club like Hearts who could go down, for Thistle who could go down. But I just don't see any other way now. I think we've reached a point where it's inevitable that that's what's going to happen. And at least if you, the quicker you declare it, the quicker you can distribute money to clubs that quite clearly need it. Yeah, uh, good call, Ali. I must admit, just slightly a, a variation on that from my own point of view. I know Barry and I are in this camp and Ruffy finally is in our camp on it. Uh, I think once we get to the end of the season, if they declare... Um, you know, the champions of each uh, respective division, I think what they will do is look to try and implement, uh, you know, an expanded league this season to change it. There's talk mm -hmm. of even making uh, next season a, a smaller amount of games, but I think they'll need more games and I think they'll work out a split and I think they will go to an expanded league. That's just my gut feeling on it and I think I think we'd all like to see that, Barry. Yeah, I, look, I, I've said it now for a number of years. I think League reconstruction, bigger leagues um, is the way forward. I think it will benefit f Scottish football in a whole. Look, whether that's less managers under pressure, they can give younger players a, a chance in the first team. There's, there's no as much pressure getting relegated. I just think as a whole and for Scottish football, Peter, I think league reconstruction is the way forward. Now, I know they were talking about that 21-22. It was going to be happening. Just let's bring it forward. Um, now, it's a perfect opportunity to go and do it, and I think you would see the vast majority of clubs been happy with reconstruction. 
Okay, if you see me occasionally looking down, folks, it's just I'm trying to get uh, a, a lot of people's uh, comments coming in on the uh, uh, Facebook Live as well. This is uh, Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. If you are just joining us, slightly different circumstances with the screen and everything. But uh, I want you to get your head around Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year, Manager of the Year, because uh, I think the general consensus from all four of us is quite simply that we don't think uh, a ball is going to be kicked in earnest again in Scottish football. Is that fair, unless somebody wants to pipe up and tell me something different? I, I, no, would I, can't just say, I, I, I would just say, Peter, as long as UEFA are keeping system, they're going to get their two major trophies out the road and everybody will be hanging on till they make their final decision. And I think that will be the same with England as well. We, they'll all want to play these yeah. games. So if anybody cuts what UEFA is saying, then obviously you have to come up with the right answers. Okay, um, it's a big call. Give us your thoughts on that. What, what about young player, player of the year, manager of the year? Uh, on Facebook Live, we can react to that as well. And uh, the Lichties have started selling bricks to get uh, money in. Um, lots of people are coming up with innovative ideas uh, to try and uh, you know get some money into the club. It's going to be mightily difficult to do that. And of course, the biggest revenue is fans coming in through the uh, turnstiles, but that is not happening at the moment. Um, are there other things more important at the moment? Uh, Peter Henderson says Celtic hold all three trophies and will continue to do so. Uh, so not as much of an issue either way. Nothing changes, says Peter. Uh, but of course, uh, a lot of people want to contest how you would decide uh, the league, how you would decide the Scottish Cup. Will those two semi-finals be played? When will they be played? Uh, so lots of comments coming in on that. And of course, lots of people wondering. Some people actually thought that Barry's screen had uh, frozen there because he hasn't moved his eyes for the last five minutes. But don't worry, <laughs> Barry is there. He's he's in his kitchen, honestly. He's looking good. Ruffy's there and Ali's there as well. Um, so listen, a couple other little points I want to get your thoughts on, boys, before we start contemplating uh, player, young player and manager of the year as well as reading out more and more of the uh, comments coming in. Michael Mullen says the player of the year has got to be Odson Edouard. Well, first and foremost, let's have a look at player of the year and all the nominees. Yeah, there you have it. That's uh, quite a good list in the nominees there. I mean, you can't rule out Sam Cosgrove. Am I being, uh, you know, overly sympathetic to him? He was on a great goal-scoring run, Barry, and then suddenly, you know, dried up a wee bit. But still, his goals tally is good enough to be involved in at least the voting. Is that fair? Yeah, I think the six players that, that come up there have all had a uh, very good season so far. But look, <coughs> one guy wins it outright, easily the best player in Scottish football just now um, is Edward. Every time I see him, he seems to get better. He's that difference maker in the Celtic team. And um, I, he could easily go down, Peter, into the English Premier League and play the top four teams, easily in my opinion. And there's been, I mean, the, the player they had before Celtic, Dumbelli, I think he's better than Dumbelli. I think he's got the potential to be a a top class footballer at the the highest level, and whether that's going down to England or moving to Spain or, or whatever, for me, he's the best player in Scottish uh, Scottish football. Yeah, uh, listen, I think that's a fair comment, Ali. Everybody will look at uh, what Edson Odson Edward has achieved uh, this season and what he's brought to the side. Not only his goals, but of course his clever play as well. Uh, high praise indeed from Barry. Yeah, I have to say, I think I agree. I think he has the potential to be better than Dembele. 
I think the thing that, that really makes him stand out for me is his <clears> temperament. He just seems very composed all the time, regardless of the, the magnitude of the occasion. He seems very calm. He's always very unflustered with the ball. He just there's a there's a feeling at times that he's just got that extra wee bit of time that he looks so unhurried. I think his composure marks him out. Uh, but I think he's been excellent. I think not only the, the goals that he's scored, but also what we've seen since January when the team's gone back is his link-up play with Lee Griffiths. Prior to that, I thought he was also working back a lot more and getting involved in, in the team as a whole. But I think he's been exceptional. And, and the way to judge it is it the difference that he's made at times for Celtic. This season has been telling. Kenny Collins on uh, Facebook Live says, uh, Ryan Christie, the highest goal-scoring midfielder as well. Uh, well, he's in there, Ruffy, on merit. Uh, just before he, he picked up the uh, the suspension, you know, he was on fire as well. Yeah, I think the unfortunate thing is we usually, uh, when we come to these decisions, uh, usually the season isn't finished uh, when uh, we make these decisions for the the top player, but now we're obviously cutting it another two months uh, because of what's happening in the, in the football. I think if it had been December, uh, I would have vo I voted for Morales uh, quite easily. I wouldn't have had any hesitation at all. Uh, but since January, you know, I think uh, Edward has been the player overall from start of the season right to where we are just now who has contributed more and I think he's getting better and better. He's a big time player and you can see what he's done for Lee Griffiths. You know, he's, he's brought Lee Griffiths back into the scene. So for me, it would be him quite easily. Yeah, uh, lots of people uh, giving us their own thoughts on this. Hi to Charlie Irons, who's joined us obviously with his eye on what's happening at Tyne Castle. Reg Tate says, what about giving it to a top goalkeeper? And I, I have to say, I have to quote one of my old uh, compadres from Radio Clyde. I can hear Andy Walker sh shouting, you can't give an award to a goalkeeper or a defender. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, Rothy, but there are very few goalkeepers winning yeah, Player would... of the Year. I mean, I think... <laughs> I, think, I, I, I would, I would back. No, I would back. No, no, yeah, no, Andy, Andy won it. But I would back that up by saying, if you have a good go goalkeeper, you might still be in the European Cup. Oh, the old goalkeepers union. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I take your point there. I, I mean, I get. You that, might so. have won. You uh, might have won the Europe. You might have won the European Cup, and that's Liverpool yeah, twice. Okay. Yeah, OK. I, I, I'm sure uh, Adrian will get in contact with you um, because you've absolutely <laughs> slaughtered them. Uh, and of course, uh, it just shows you Alisson is a top drawer uh, goalkeeper, but when he's out, they missed him. They're out of the European Cup. I think, can you name me, can you, any of you remember one of the uh, Aberdeen goalkeepers who won uh, Player of the Year? Any of you got that knowledge? Snelders, Theo Snelders. Theo Snelders. Snelders. Theo Snelders, yeah. Ended up at Rangers yep. as well. Um, okay, um, now let's have a look. Uh, get a lot of people uh, giving us their thoughts on who they think should be. I think the general consensus from everybody is that uh, it's going to be um, it's certainly going to be Odson Edward. And Jerry McShane says, geez, I agree with Barry again. Uh, Edward could play in any league in the top team uh, with the top teams. Um, so, I mean, even Celtic fans are agreeing with you now, Barry. This is a this is an un uncharted oh, water for everybody. They're all on your side. Although yeah, it's, I have to say, you look crazy. yeah, you look well and truly dejected when you suggested them in the first place. But nevertheless, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, gonna, see, uh, uh, see one thing. <laughs> One thing about watching Edward is his level of consistency, Peter, for me. And he's very unselfish as well. When he gets in goal-scoring positions, he'll lay in his teammates. I just think all round as a footballer, the last 12 months he's improved something awful. Here's a great line, Barry. Um, it's coming in from David Rennie. He says, how's it going, folks? What's Barry's thoughts on Brora getting the title? Uh, the league's not finished. Would he be happy for his Kelty side to get the same... Uh, Brora and Kelty to go up into an expanded league. There's a wee Kelty question for you. Yeah, look, I wouldn't say no, but I wouldn't, as I say, Peter, I would rather win it outright. I would rather win it properly. Um, but listen, whatever decision is made, you've got to accept. Yeah, absolutely. I don't I don't know if you noticed there, but you were talking and giving us a great insight. Ruffy, because he's now housebound, can have a full slug of his gin and tonic, <laughs> which he sneakily had there. Well, 
<laughs> no, no, no. The, 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 the bar doesn't open in this house till six. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure, Robbie, sure. Uh, listen, we talked about player of the year. Let's have a look at what we think. If the, if there's no ball kicked again this season, here's a look at the nominees that we think might pick up young player of the year. Now that's just six on offer. You might have somebody different in there. I think uh, the rules, having spoken to the PFA on Friday, Alison, is you have to be 21 before the end of July to be eligible uh, to be considered as a young player in that category. Yeah, I think there, there's a few there. Uh, I think my money would probably be on, on Lewis Ferguson. I think he's been exceptional. I thought he did an excellent season last term. I thought he's continued that this season again. Lewis Smith might be my other one that I think has caught the eye at times. Uh, I think I don't know if he was expected to play as often as he had this season, but any time I've seen Hamilton, I've been quite impressed with him. Uh, Hickey too, I've liked. Um, but yeah, it augurs well for these clubs. I think Hamilton, the fact that they're prepared to go out and, and give these kids a chance and it just shows you sometimes if they're prepared to take it that they can come in and be influential. But I think the outstanding candidate there for me would be Lewis Ferguson at Aberdeen. Yeah, on, on the Facebook Live, Gary Adams says, hands down, it's got to be Lewis Ferguson, Barry. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, I'm not just saying it because he's my nephew. Um, I'm delighted for him because Peter, he, he had a tough time when he was 15 getting obviously let go by Rangers um, and he's had to go and do it the hard way and Hamilton Ackies have got to take a lot of credit as Alison just mentioned there. They gave him the opportunity to get uh, get his feet back in the ground and um, gave him the first team opportunity to go and play and he's went up to Aberdeen um, and for me last season he was different class. He's, it's been a bit stop start for him but I think over the last month or six weeks just before the, the season obviously stopped here with the virus. He was coming back onto a, a, a very good game again. So for me, he deserves it. Yeah, Ruffy, have we forgotten anybody, Ruffy, or do you think that's not a bad six? No, but you, by you telling us obviously the time scale of the, the date of birth and everything. Does that leave uh, Edward out of this? Does he miss that by months or anything? Oh, he can't yeah, win into the category. <laughs> Yeah, there's only good. Way, there's only good fair. players. There's only good players have won both. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Anybody have we you know? Won both? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think somebody else on the show <laughs> might have. Yeah. Uh, uh, listen, uh, yeah, I have to well say, said, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think. I, th I think did James Forrest not win Player of Young? I should know. I host the thing. Um, I think James Forrest won Young Player and Player of the Year, Alison. I think he was nominated. I'm not sure if he won both. I think he was yeah. nominated. I th or I think what I'll tell you who has one, Pop Aidan McGeady. Aidan McGeady, yeah. And I think Kieran Tierney, possibly. Yeah, that's a good point as well. And yeah. as you can hear, the, the, you know, no, Darth Celtic Ruffy is one, right? off and running again. Can you hear him? It's not me, it's Darth Ruffy. It's Ruffy. As soon as he puts his mic up, you can hear him breathing there. It's unbelievable. You need Ventolin. <laughs> Again. Hi. Uh, to get back to get back to the uh, to get back to the <laughs> the, the candidate Si, the, the young boy at Hamilton Ackies has done particularly well. But I, I I would have said it would be between Lewis and if Fringpong had been playing regularly and not injured or taken out the team, I think it'd be a bit of a neck and neck uh, if he yeah. played the same amount of games that Lewis has played. Yeah, James Thompson says I'm just not sure Scott if he's Allen. played often enough. 
Yeah, that's the other key point, Ali. I think you're right. Uh, James Thompson says, can't believe Scott Allen didn't get a mention. I mean, Scott Allen is a is a wonderful player, but I, I just think, you know, there's been too many kind of a setbacks along the way. Incidentally, just talking about Scott Allen, he is one of those players that has to be, Barry, ultra careful. He has diabetes, and, and, and that is something that is heavily at risk when you're talking about the coronavirus. He certainly doesn't want any additional illness uh, to complicate things, so he, he really has to self Isolate. Yeah, you can understand that, Peter. And I mean, I would imagine there's quite a few players. I've played with a few players that suffered for asthma as well um, during my career. So all these guys have, have got to be really careful and be on the ball when it when it comes to doing the right things. Yep, and already Rab Lindsay reckons that uh, if Ruffy finishes this, the show by saying, "Alison, I am your father," that will that will cap it all off. <laughs> Uh, Darth Ruffy is with us, Barry Ferguson, <laughs> Alison McConnell. We've talked about Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year. Look at him. <laughs> We've talked about Young Player of the Year. Here, here's, a, here's a cracker for you. What about uh, us looking now at the nominees for, and this is just throwing six up there. There might be somebody that you want to throw in there on our Facebook Live. By all means, do so. Uh, here's the nominees for Manager of the Year. Well, this takes me back to, and I, I know some of you guys have been at the PFA Player of the Year Awards on many an occasion. I think I've been there the last maybe 12 or 13 hosting it, and I'll never forget the look on Neil Lennon's face when Manager of the Year was announced as Mick Sue Patalainen. And, and, and you know what it's like, uh, Ali, you go to an awards ceremony, if you're at the Oscars, you want to see the other three or four faces you know, going, oh, well done. It, it, it really should have gone to Al Pacino, but uh, Neil's face was a picture and the words that came out of his mouth will live with me for a long, long time. So, uh, who who gets it? Who gets it if you call it now? For me, I think it's it's got to be Lennon. I think he was on course to deliver a, a quadruple treble before this had hit. I think uh, they, they, he's been excellent since he took over last February from uh, from Brendan Rodgers. I think th there was almost a begrudging acceptance of him from an element of the Celtic support who didn't want him to get it this summer on a permanent basis. I think he's barely foot, uh, a foot wrong. Uh, the European results, I think he'll have cause to do the Copenhagen exit. But domestically, I think uh, he's been excellent. Uh, I, I just think if, you, if you're prepared to deliver, if you're on course to deliver, three domestic trophies. I'm not sure who else you could give it to, really. Yeah, Mark has just uh, sent us a message on uh, Facebook. Uh, Barry says, Gerard, manager of the year, only team still in Europe. I can't disagree with you. Um, but you mentioned that mother will shoestring budget Gary Holt as well. I think he's got to take a lot of credit for what he's done at Livingston. But look, he's already got one cup in the bag. He's in this, He was in the semi-final and he's 13 points clear at the top of the league before it, it stopped here um, due to the virus. So Lenny's the, the one that I would imagine would get it. Yeah, there's 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 a good call, Ruffy, for Stephen Robinson to get you know a special mention as well on their budget, and being above Aberdeen and, and making a right go of it. You know, the, they lost David Turnbull at a key point as well, mm. even though he was bound for Celtic. Suddenly he was coming back, and he's only come back in the last few games. That they, they had to sell James Scott too. Yes, uh, I mean I think whole and Robertson have got uh, really, really good credentials to win this. We all At this time of the year, we always start talking about budgets 
you know, and these two have obviously uh, done everything they can with the budgets they've got. But for me, I, I've never changed my mind. Every year, we're in the game to win trophies and medals, and, and that's what Lenny's done and his players have done. So for me, it's the, it's, the, it's the manager who wins things that I gets my vote, and that's why I would go for Lennon. Yeah, OK. Uh, Stephen McNamara says, Lennon for Manager of the Year. And also, he says, uh, Robbo for Championship Manager of the Year. Not Robbie Nielsen. Uh, Dundee United have run away with it. D does he deserve it because uh, of his budget as well and the fact that they're winning? It's a lot of pressure on Dundee United at the start, Ali, to deliver the title. But uh, I think, you know, the reason why Stephen has mentioned uh, John Robertson at Inverness is because he believes he should have been the choice for uh, the Hearts job before Stendhal was appointed. I think a lot of people would agree with that. I think uh, we all spoke of that and thought it would be an obvious choice at the time too. Uh, as for the Championship, I think the United have invested hugely in that squad this year to get them up, which is part of the whole problem when we don't have decisions made about where it goes next, is that you have clubs in similar situations who have ploughed a lot of money in uh, I know Lauren Shankland was given a very good contract to get him up there to, to Tannadice to, to secure effectively to get them out of the championship and to get them back into the top flight, which is why the situation just now is so unnerving when you have all these different possibilities of how it might play out. Yeah, uh, give us your thoughts on that. How do you uh, see it looking as far as manager of the year? We're just putting nominations up. You might have somebody that we've uh, forgotten about, but certainly without a ball being kicked, it's well worth uh, having a chat about it. Uh, just before we go, if you get a chance, do share our stream. I I'm going to finish on uh, the 25th anniversary of a wonderful player. Uh, I think Ruth Hewlett had Davy Cooper in his all-time World Eleven, which is high praise indeed. Hewlett was a, a magnificent player, and I think Davy Cooper's performances certainly rubbed off on him. And I think it was a lovely touch around about the time when, sadly, Davy passed away. But it's it's hard to believe, Barry. It's the 25th anniversary today of uh, the late, great Davy Cooper passing away. Yeah, I've been reading um, loads of articles on him. Um, I was only, a, obviously, a youngster when I seen him. I actually still run past his, his statues down at the Hamilton Palace grounds. So I see it. Uh, quite often, but some of the things that Coop used to do with our football was was unbelievable. Um, just in terms of ability, he'd frighten ability. But I would have great to see that bit. I think he would have went on to the next level. Um, but no, a fantastic player. Some goals he scored by that goal um, against Aberdeen. Remember the free kick where he he smashed into the top corner. Instead, he normally would think he could like swerving it, he just started an absolute right put it in the top bin, so that's one of the many goals that I remember, but I think he played and I mean, gone far too soon. Yeah, absolutely. I just wish he'd played uh, 10 years later, uh, Ruffy, in the great Rangers side uh, that was winning at nine in a row because uh, you know, he deserved to play with better players. Uh, no disrespect to the teams he played in. I mean, he won titles with uh, some of the teams that he played with in, in, in the Blue of Rangers. But I, I just think when you hear Tam Cowan talking about him in the Motherwell jersey, uh, and you just wonder, had he been born 10 years later in a really good Rangers team, he would have stood out for me. Yes, he, he stood out before that, Peter. I think we all know the, the, the ability that he had. He was the kind of player that supporters pay their money to go and see. If I was supporting Rangers and I knew I was going to lock the Ibrox to see Davy Cooper in full flow, it'd be worth the admission money. Uh, he was just an entertainer. And sadly, the game is lacking of people People like Davy Cooper. We don't have enough of them. And uh, I think anybody that saw him will really appreciate how good he was. Yeah, absolutely. And if I can, uh, obviously it's, it's something that I have mentioned before, but it, it sticks with me because I, I used to have uh, the, the great Sandy Jarden with me as a co-commentator in my other life when I lived, Alison, in Edinburgh. Uh, where, uh, you know, you had nights out and nobody really cared if you were a Rangers or a Celtic fan. Their whole life, Ruffy, as you know, was dominated by are you a Jambo or a Hibby? Uh, and Sandy Jarman and I used to do the co-commentary uh, for Radio 4th. I never forget, I always used to say to him, 
you know, what's your favourite goal? Did you score a favourite goal? Because Sandy Jarden could actually play in midfield uh, as well as at fullback as well. And he said, Peter, you'll never believe it. He said, I, I played in the Driver Cup final. I ran about 45 yards with the ball. He says, and I leathered it into the roof of the net, Barry. He says, and I'm going away thinking this is the goal that's going to beat Celtic. All the journalists will be there at the end. They'll want to chat to me. I'll be on the back pages of every newspaper. It'll be <laughs> Sandy Jardin wins the cup for Rangers, he says. <laughs> and then Coop gets the ball, <laughs> flicks it up over three players' heads, takes it on his chest, side foots it past the Celtic goalkeeper and walks away as if he's playing in a five-a-side match and steals his oh, thunder. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I, I, listen, I, I remember seeing that go. I watched it on YouTube. That's unbelievable skill. As Ruffy says, you don't get players like David Cooper nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, um, uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy this format. We're going to try and phone as many footballers as we can. Little features on our uh, Facebook and YouTube programme with Arnold Clark. Uh, so basically, if there's a footballer in the house, we'll try and get a chat with them, get them on, do little features, get you involved in it. And of course, we'll read out as many of your messages. Thank you very much to so many uh, who've been uh, giving us uh, their thoughts on football. We're certainly going to be talking about it. We'll show bits of memorabilia. Barry, big question. Have you polished your medals so we can have a look at them on this programme? <coughs> Yeah, we'll have them ready. What do you want them have uh, ready for? Wednesday or Friday is good enough for us and you can talk us through some of the, the ones that mean the most to you. Right. Everyone means oh. everything to me. I've not got a favourite. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, OK, well, um, try, and, try and pick one that doesn't involve you scoring in a Scottish <laughs> Cup final. That'll make us all happy. Uh, but, <laughs> Ruffy, Ruffy yeah. if you get a chance, and I don't know if you will get the chance, but if we can somehow get the technology so that you can show us, you know, the Kubiak strip would be great to show us on the camera. That would be magic. You know, that yeah. would be brilliant. And, of course, the big dilemma for everyone, I'll bring out a few of these mad bits of memorabilia, the big dilemma for <laughs> everyone tonight on our programme is, do we obviously wish we could head to Ruffy's for the bar opening at 6pm tonight? Uh, do we wish we were there with Barry for tatties and mince with his wife? Or do we wish we were going to read a crime thriller with <laughs> Alison McConnell? Well, the, dile the dilemma is unbelievable, by the way. Uh, listen, I have to say thanks to everybody. Tom Devlin says, will Ruffy get his centenary medal out? That is scaling, Ruffy. Not many people yeah, are going to win Cup winner's yeah. medal, eh? No, Barry's got about 22 medals. I'll bring my two in and I can talk about both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah, your fifth. What about is that your fifty spice? cap medal for Scotland? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you want the great space ship, oh, Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you bring out the scary space actually, pants. Yes, that could happen tomorrow. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah. I'm actually looking at it now. So uh, I'll. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll what do you, you want first? Could be a scary space. <laughs> I'll go for scary spice. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the for the benefit of anyone who doesn't know, uh, on Friday's show, Ruffy revealed that he has uh, a pair of scary spices knickers framed. How it happened, Ruffy will tell you the story. It's as simple as that. Alison is looking in disbelief. Alison, we're only giving you the facts. While we were talking about football memorabilia, Ruffy said, and by the way, I have scary spices, knickers flames. That is a story for tomorrow. It's well worth joining us. Every day at our new time it's an 11 at 4 o'clock. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You might have to deliver it at that alley. Um, but every every day at four o'clock, Monday to Friday, uh, we'll bring you our uh, football show with uh, sponsored by Arnold Clark. Thank you very much uh, to each and every one of you for contributing uh, as well. And uh, Gordon Herriot says, what about Scary Spices Knickers? Gordon, don't worry about it. Even Jerry McShane is looking forward to seeing Scary Spices Knickers. Uh, what colour are they, uh, Ruffy, just out of curiosity? Uh, they're actually white. Pearl white. white. Okay. Pearl uh, must white. have faded. You told us they were pink <laughs> on Friday, so clearly the sunlight's gone. No, they're, they're, uh, no, they're anyway. well, they're well, they're well framed. 
Okay, there you are. That's it. You've got it. Football and entertainment as well in this programme. It's mental. Uh, listen, uh, as ever with um, PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark, the football show, thank you for contributing. Thank you for joining us on it. Uh, tell your friends if they missed it, catch up with it on your YouTube channel as well. Uh, we'll have podcasts out as well for you to enjoy. We'll be speaking to players who can't get out and are sitting in their house. Uh, we'll also be speaking to some legends of the past as well on the programme and bring you as many features as we possibly can to brighten up your day. As ever, stay safe, follow the government information and make sure uh, that all your family are safe as well in these very difficult times and hopefully we'll bring you as much entertainment as we possibly can. So from Alison, from Barry Ferguson, uh, from Alan Ruffin, from myself, Peter Martin, thank you very much for watching us. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.